Hiya, so this is week three of our classes and this week we are going to make um, a bird feeder, hanging bird feeder here um, in the shape of an acorn. So just to give you a wee look at that and I'll show you how we do it. So first of all, just taking a ball of clay and as always, take my clay out the bag and I want to spend a bit of time making sure that I get any air out of it. So obviously I've worked on this a little bit so already just take your time on making sure that it's nice and compressed and hopefully getting rid of any air pockets. So we're going to do a couple of pinch pots first of all to make the basis of this. So again ball of clay pushing in with my thumb. Again, if you find that difficult to do, if the clay is quite stiff, then you can just push something else into it, um, the end of a spoon or something, or a paintbrush, just anything to make an opening in there. And then again, holding it in this hand and turning it as I'm doing it, I'm pushing between my thumb and fingers. Pressing out and thinning out the walls of the clay and creating an equal thickness. Again, I'm working quicker on this than you need to be, so just really take your time with it and make sure it's all even. Once you have pushed out and you've got a bit of a bigger opening, you can get your hand in there as well and use that to really kind of help shape it and scoop it out. So again, always turning it to make sure it's even. Just like kind of putting in and scooping there just to get the shape I want. Okay, so I'm aiming for something like that. And what I'm going to do is two of these that I'm joined together. So once you've got this shape, just pop it aside to stiffen up a, a little bit. Um, just sitting it face down like that. When I've got two of them, I'm going to join them together. You want to try and make sure if you start off with two equal size balls of clay um, and try and get the openings as close together as you can because um, we're going to join these together. So as always when I'm joining, I'm going to score and put lots of slip on. So I'm using my serrated edge kidney or you could use your knife or a fork or something just to get some nice score marks on there. So you go on one direction and then on the other. I want to do this on both sides of it. Before I join these together, I just want to speak a wee bit about making sure that these don't have air in them and that we don't get any blowouts in the kiln. Even though you've pushed it out, you might still feel bits that are a little bit thicker um, and possibly have some air in them. So just take either your needle or your knife and you can just prick holes. Now you're not going to see this, so you can make as many holes if you, as you want. Um, just things like this, just minimise the risk of anything going wrong with it and parts blown out when it's in the kiln. So again, it's worth doing. You don't want to make your piece and be quite happy with it and then lose it. Okay, so I've just made lots of prick marks inside that. Just do the same with the other one. The other thing you can do is if you feel that your pinch pot is a little bit on the heavy side, remember this is going to be a hanging object. Um, once the clay is a little bit stiffer and leather hard, you can use a spoon just to scrape out some of it and make it a little bit thinner on the inside. Ok, 
okay, so I've put lots of holes in that one as well. Scored both sides of it, and now I'm just going to go on with lots of slip. Okay, I'm going to smooth it all together. So I'm just going to go around first of all. We really need to make sure these are properly joined. So I'm going to use one of my modelling tools first of all. Just go all the way around. so that you can actually blend the clay together. And again, don't rush this part. You really need to make sure that it's properly joined and it doesn't open up. Okay, so once I've joined it using my tool, again, I can go back over it with the rough edge of my kidney there, the metal kidney. too hard because it's full of air, it could burst. You can also just use your fingers just to smooth this down and your rubber kidney. Of this, it's quite awkward to sit down. Um, if we sit it on a flat bench or table, we're going to lose the shape of it that we want here at the bottom. So, if you've got any empty tubs or anything lying about the house, I've just popped in a scrunched up cloth in that and some sponges, and I'll just pop them in and then I can rest it in there just to work on without bashing it. actually bought um, from Home Bargains just cheap um, icing stamps, um, it's probably about two pounds for a set of them so you can use those to cut out or again you can just cut out your own leaves with your knife. So just a bit of clay that's been rolled out. quite thin with this. Again, when you're rolling out, 
If you see any air bubbles or the clay, just prick them with a needle. And just use my little leaf cutter just to cut out some leaves. Okay, and as I say, your other option is just to use a knife and cut out some leaf shapes. little tub that I cut out earlier on so I'm just going to start sticking them on so I'm just going to pop this on a little turning table just now just to make it easier. Again I need to score anywhere I'm sticking it on. be the whole top part of this so I'm just going to score it all the way down. start adding more at the bottom here so just lots of slip. Squishing them in too much that I lose the shape of them there. And just continue the whole way round. Another thing you could do is if you don't have a lot of clay left in your bag or don't want to do that and want to save a bit of time. You can make marks in this just to create the texture of the leaves just by your, some of your tools. Just have a practice on a spare bit of clay. See what marks that your tools make and you can create repeat patterns just by pressing in and build up. Again, just be careful when you're working on this shape because it is full of air. You don't want to press too hard and burst it. But you can see that we can just work in the, the pattern all the way around. The next thing I'm going to do is put the stock on that we're going to use to hang this from. So I've just taken um, some clay out the bag. I'll just take another wee bit here. Pull this up. stuff's a wee bit stiffer so it's not working as well um, but you can just bash this into a stock shape Until you 
get the shape you like. So I've got my stock shape here. What I'm going to do though is put a hole all the way through this so we don't have um, any air. So I'm just going to use the end of a paintbrush here. but I'm just skewering it the whole way through and just giving it a twist as well just to widen that out again if you think it's quite thick at any bits you can use your needle just to go in there and poke some ear holes that just allows any ear trapped in the clay somewhere to travel. If it doesn't have anywhere to go, then that's when you get bits blown out of your pottery. So it's quite important when we're working on anything quite thick and chunky like this. Okay, I've got quite a thick bit there that I'm just using my fingers to push in and just press that out a little bit. It's up to yourself, you can keep that open at the top or you can just smooth it together and bash it closed. Okay, what I'm going to do is with a straw I'm going to create a hole right the way through this going to be able to put some wire or some string through to be able to hang our bird feeder when we're finished. So just using the straw from all the way through, just giving it a wiggle about just to widen the hole. You need quite a big hole if you're going to get some string through that. And then as always, if you just smoothen it down again, you don't want any rough edges. this if you want before you attach it on. And if you feel it's too thick again you can use like a spoon or your knife and just take some of the weight out and just hollow it out a little bit. when I'm attaching this piece. Don't want to put that just on top now. I want to make a hole in here, otherwise again, we're just trapping air into it. So again, you can just use your straw. Before you attach it, and just score and slip. Okay, really, um, I wouldn't join this straight on if I had the time. I would let this stiffen up a little bit again, leather hard, so that it holds its shape before I attach it onto here. Same if you're attaching handles onto anything, always make them when the clay is soft and plastic and then allow them to stiffen up before you attach them so they keep their shape. Again, lots of slip. Okay, I'm just 
put it in to get a nice seal and finish on it. Just going to use my needle here again and just make another air hole just to make sure that, that goes all the way through. And I've also just added on this little bit here and um, sometimes getting acorns just another one that's starting to form joined onto it so you can take just a smaller piece of ball clay and just do a really tiny pinch pot. As I said before, you can just use your tools just to make some texture on that. I'm going to keep my finger inside to press against. I'm just going to work all the way down this. So once you've stuck all that on, you would actually just sit it aside just until it really starts to firm up. Um, this one is obviously quite soft just now that I'm using, but once it's firmer, you'll be able to get a nice finish on that. Just going over it with your rubber kidney or the back of a spoon. Get it all nice and sleek down. And the other thing you can do is just add on button the clay just at the bottom acorns I've got like a wee kind of pointy bit at the bottom there. We can just use a wee tiny ball of clay. Let's go and slip that on. surface on it. The surface is what we're, we're going to decorate at the end of it so I'll show you that in another week how um, Minx is finished off and painted. Um, but the next important thing is we need to cut out holes at either side to be able to, to stuff this um, with our feeding mix. So I'm just going in with my knife. You can cut out a template for this if you want to make it easier, just a paper template as a guide. And once you open up, you can actually then get your fingers inside to just smooth it off and finish inside. You might want to get your tool in there as well, just to smooth together or join. Another thing you want to remember to do is we need to be able to give the birds something to perch on to um, so they can feed from this. So if you just make a wee hole with your straw again, just at both sides of that, you'll be able to stick a wee bit of wooden dowling 
or a stick in there once it's all finished and assembled and it'll just give them a wee ledge to sit on as they, they feed from the bird feeder. Okay so that's pretty much it finished. Again you would obviously just continue to put your leaves all the way around or some texture and just allow it to dry fully. If you don't have a wee tub to stand on you can see here I've got mine balancing on some sponges as well so you can do that. Um, but whilst it's drying, it will risk losing shape.